imagine saving a million lives each year? In a few short years, we can. And I'm going to show you how. We're on the cusp of transformation and transportation that's being driven by advances in vehicle connectivity and automation. And it's going to impact all of our lives. Over the next 30 years, a million people will die in car crashes in the United States alone. A million. Globally, over that same time frame, 40 million people will perish. That's more than the population of Canada. Car crashes are the number one cause of death among young people and the number five cause of death overall in developing nations. It could be you, a friend, a family member, or a loved one. We have the technical capability and a moral obligation to reverse this trend to build cars that don't crash. Now, as I was growing up, cars were pretty basic machines that hadn't changed much since the days of Henry Ford. We didn't have seat belts. Well, airbags weren't even thought about at that time. Crashes were sometimes horrific and often resulted in serious injury and death. I was involved in a, a number of accidents over my lifetime. And the year I got my driver's license, we recorded the most traffic fatalities ever in the United States history. 53,000 people died that year. Not my fault, <laughs> right? But I was involved in a lot of accidents, as I'm sure many of you have. And you might have lost friends and family over the years. And that's why I got into transportation, to help save lives. Today, our lives are filled with distractions. And we take those distractions into our vehicles with us every day. According to Distractify, we spend 4.3 years of our lives behind the wheel of a car. That's half as much time as we spend in front of the TV and three times as much time as we spend in the bathroom. So think about how much time we could save if we all had TVs in our bathroom. <laughs> anyway, the point is that we want to be productive and connected. We want to lead our normal lives, even when we're in our vehicles. So while it's important right now that we keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel and our, our minds on the task of driving, in the very near future, that may not be the case. But if you're like me, driving gets in the way of life. We're experiencing right now disruptive new technologies that will help us remain productive and connected in our vehicles while also driving down crash rates. And when you consider that 90% of crashes are caused by human error, you see the possibilities that technology holds for solving this huge crisis we have. Over the past few years, I've had the opportunity to ride in, in a number of automated vehicles. And it's exhilarating to let go of the wheel, relinquish control of the vehicle. It's also a little bit scary. But to see the car slow down with other cars around it, or to maneuver through a series of curves, or to stop suddenly before hitting an obstacle or a pedestrian is really quite incredible. Florida is one of the first states to pass a law to allow automated vehicle testing on its highways. So as you're driving around and you glance over at the driver next to you and he's reading the newspaper, that could be an automated vehicle. <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. But think about how this technology can help the blind and the disabled 
by giving them mobility that they could only dream about. But this isn't a dream. This is right around the corner. Car makers, technology companies, and startups are all working on the next generation of transportation systems. You might have already seen some of these features in today's vehicles. Lane tracking, adaptive cruise control. But they're in a race now to see who can come up with the first production-ready, fully autonomous vehicle. And you see here on the screen, three prototypes of fully automated vehicles. They don't have steering wheels, they don't have foot pedals. I particularly like the guy in the middle because he looks like an evil stormtrooper. I, I like <laughs> Darth Vaderish. But what I want to do now is take you on a ride into the not too distant future. Put you into the machine behind the wheel of a connected and semi automated vehicle. So here we go. Driving down I 10. Notice on our left an automated truck platoon passing by in the left-hand lane. Getting a little drowsy, the sensors in the car detect that, and they vibrate my seat to wake me up, keep me alert. Up ahead, there's an on-ramp. We get a merge warning that somebody is about to enter, and of course, because automated vehicles are very polite, our car automatically slows down to let them in. Up ahead. There's a crash. Two cars got tangled up. One of them is a connected vehicle. And through vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications, but also vehicle-to-infrastructure communications, information comes back to the cockpit of our vehicle. And it automatically slows down and prepares to stop. Information also goes back to a traffic management center where operators can not only detect the incident, but they can dissect the incident and try to determine what kind of resources are going to be required to correct the incident itself. They dispatch emergency services. Well, here we are. At a different intersection, you see us in a car, count down to the traffic signal turns green, and the emergency vehicle preempts that traffic signal on its way to the incident. As it enters the highway, it sends out an alert to the other motorists. Get out of the way, I'm coming through. The other motorists do. They allow the emergency vehicle to access the incident scene. And before you know it, this freeway is back to normal operating conditions. And you might also note that this freeway has no signs on it because in the future, signs will likely be inside the car. So that gives you a glimpse of the future, maybe five years from now, not too long. But it is going to be a long time before everybody has an automated vehicle. So during that time period, between now and then, we're going to see some pretty dramatic changes in our lives because of vehicle automation and connectivity. Vehicle automation will enable vehicle sharing, and mobility on demand services. Right now, cars are parked 95% of the time. Now, that's a, a waste of a huge personal investment, first of all. But let's flip flop that. Let's reverse it. Think about a car sharing environment where you can take a car to work, an automated vehicle have another deliver your aging parents to the doctor, and yet another to deliver your children to soccer. And if cars are used 95% of the time, parking needs will plummet. What does that mean? Well, it means that parking lots in our cities can become parks. On-street parking can become pedestrian facilities, sidewalk cafes. Our cities will become greener, more walkable, more livable. If cars don't crash, we can squeeze 400% more capacity out of our existing roadways. We do this by decreasing the separation between vehicles, increasing and harmonizing the speed of the vehicles, and decreasing lane widths. 
And if cars don't crash, we don't need the huge clear zones that we design along today's highways. That land can be put to more productive use or used for bikeways, pedestrian facilities. If cars don't crash, we can drive fatalities down to near zero levels and improve the quality of life for everyone. This generation, all of you, can help put a stop to this century-long epidemic. We have the cure, and now it's time to implement it.